originals. Taken from the Marvel HeroQuest Winter Special. The room was almost dark, lit only by a single burning brand. Through the gloom, a throne could vaguely be seen, and on the throne was a figure swathed in shadow. Within the shadow itself were two deeper pits of darkness like the black holes of space. The eyes of Morka. The doors at the end of the throne room opened, and a tall, skeletal figure entered. An aura of cold emanated from him, and in normal circumstances he would have been a figure of fear. But in the throne room of Morka, he was simply another servant, and his evil power paled beside that of his master. The dark figure on the throne gestured for the newcomer to step forward. The captain of the dead host, who had recently joined Morkar's ranks, walked the long length of the throne room and dropped to one knee before the Lord of Chaos. Skullmar! The voice was a low hiss, barely audible from the shadowy figure. How go our plans? Chaos Plague decimates the barbarians my lord. The dwarves are holed up in the mountain strongholds by armies of orcs. The elven forests are despoiled and burned, and more wizards each day are corrupted and made to join the ranks of chaos. Your plans go well, my lord. A hiss of pleasure came from the Dark Lord. Good, good. And how goes the harvest? Skomar looked puzzled for a moment. The harvest, my lord, it goes well. It has been a good summer, I am told. Has it? Then burn the crops in the field. I want the Empire to starve this winter. And when they begin to die, our sorcerers can raise them up to join the army which will sweep across the lands, destroying all. The captain of the dead host nodded. I will see to it, my lord. Thank you, Stolmar. But before you do that, I would like you to review my armies. Since the witch lord is indisposed, I'm putting you in charge of them. Take that dwarf, Milnik, with you. He knows the tunnels better than anyone. You may go. The skeletal figure stalked off down the throne room, and the doors swung shut behind him, leaving the Lord of Chaos brooding on his dark throne. As Skullmar strode down the gloomy corridors, he shouted out, Mulek! Mulek! A short, ugly Chaos Dwarf came scurrying out of the shadows. What is your wish, O Great One? He whined. You are to guide me around Morkar's dungeons. Show me his creatures. And no insolence. Certainly not, great master. A short time later, Skolmar and Milnik were outside the orc barracks in one of the gloomier parts of Morkar's dungeon. Milnik stood on a stool and reached up to open a spy hole in the strongly made iron door. There you are, Lord of the Universe. If you look through there, you'll see your basic fighting unit, the orc. Skolmar peered through the opening. They're green! Yes, Caesarian of the heights and depths. That's quite normal. Skolmar took another look. I'd like to meet them, Milnik. The dwarf shook his head, frowning. Oh, I wouldn't do that if I were you, chief. Skolmar turned his smouldering eyes on his servant, wincing at the sight of the large wart on the dwarf's nose. Why not? I pay them, don't I? Well, you don't exactly pay them. What, then? You let them eat their enemies, wise and wonderful one. Skolmar laughed. Ha! <laughs> ah, that's what I like to hear. I'll talk to them anyway. Open the door. 
The dwarf, muttering into his beard, which was full of old rice pudding, unfastened four large locks and swung the creaking door open. Skullmar strode past Milnick into the orc barracks. A group of orcs who were playing snap for shrunken heads looked up briefly when Skullmar entered. One of them nudged another. Er, uh, Mildred, it's the new boss. The other orc blew a raspberry. That's with the new boss. And carried on playing cards. Skullmar strode over to them. What are you playing, chaps? Mildred stood up. Who are you calling a chap? Another orc stood up. You insulting my wife, I'll bring you. A lot of orcs gathered round, chanting, Foot! 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 Mildred and her husband picked up their flails and began whirling them round their heads, advancing on Skullmar. Skullmar looked at the orcs, who promptly exploded in a ball of flame, leaving nothing but a whiff of greasy smoke. Terrible waste, he said, as he strode from the room. Such keen fighters. Oh, certainly, dark and dismal one, Milnick agreed. And they're not all that bright. But if one gets into a fight, they all come running. Nothing an orc likes better than a fight. The dwarf paused. Except maybe a toasted goblin. Now, if you'll look through here, fearful doombringer, you'll see a goblin. Skomar squinted through the spy hole in the door. I can't see anything in there. Milnick sighed. It's in the corner. Skulmar looked again. What? That little thing. I thought that was some sort of vermin. I could tread on that one without noticing. What use are they as fighters? He shut the spy hole, and they continued along the corridor. Well, omnipotent necromancer, they're not very strong, and they can't use as many different weapons as the orcs, but they're very quick, and they do have one advantage over all your other troops. Which is? Skulmar asked. Skulmar asked, as they turned a corner and came out onto a balcony above a huge cavern. This, the dwarf said, pointing down. Skulmar looked down. Filling the cave below, there were wall-to-wall -wall goblins, thousands of them, millions perhaps, all chattering and bickering. I see, said Skulmar. Fireball fodder. In the next room sat three trolls. Dicing for goblin skulls. See how big and ugly they are, your highness, said Milnick, hopefully. Skullmar growled and moved on to the next door. What are these, then? he asked. Rat ogres, tycoon of treachery, said Milnick, trembling. Bigger and faster than a troll, though not quite as tough, perhaps, but they do do a lot of damage. Only problem is, there aren't very many of them. Skullmar stalked on, and Milnick scurried after. Skullmar wasn't at all sure about the femur. Are all my monsters green? Not all of them, oh fearful manipulator. The green's quite a nice colour. And the best things are green. Slime, mould, snarl. Shut up, Mernick. Sorry, infernal tyrant. But these femur, they've only got one eye. He peered through the spy hole. The femur peered back. Ah, said the dwarf, it's not the number of eyes, but what goes on behind them. They may look like a bunch of muscle-bound idiots, but they're as crafty and as cunning as the worst sort of dragon. Put a whole group of humans together in a dungeon with one of these, and it'll pick them off one by one, in horrible ways. Think yourself lucky there's a thick door between you and it. Skulmar said nothing, but a satisfied look began to spread across his face. He was going to enjoy his new job. They walked on, down gloomy corridors hung with dusty cobwebs and the decaying remains of long-dead prisoners, whose chains clinked and rattled in the dank breeze which blew continuously from ahead. After they had been walking for a little while, Skullmar said, Is it my imagination, Milik, or is it getting colder? Oh, you're very perceptive, King of the Icy Wastes. This is where the undead live. Unlive. We find they keep better at lower temperatures. Skulmar turned his fiery stare on the dwarf. Undead? I don't remember summoning them up. The dwarf looked a little embarrassed. Well, you didn't, exactly. But you do have a lot of talented young sorcerers working for you, and it seemed such a pity to disturb you for such a uh, mundane job. So I let the apprentices do it. You did what? I'm sorry, Master of the Crooked Paths. 
the dwarf stammered, but it was very successful. Mainly, how successful? Well, we've got 10,000 zombies, 15,000 skeletons, 14,999 mummies, and uh, uh, the dwarf's voice tailed off. Skullmar picked the dwarf up by his throat. And a uh, what? Uh, the dwarf said, until the Dark Lord slackened his grip. Uh, uh, zombie hippopotamus, he muttered into his beard. The spell backfired. Skulmar raised his eyes to the ceiling and dropped the dwarf to the floor. Idiot. And how many apprentices did we lose? Only three, king of all things. Two got eaten and one got trampled by the hippopotamus. The Dark Lord sighed. I, 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 I go away for a few days and find the place a complete mess when I return. The dwarf groveled slightly. I was only trying to do my best, oh most bony one. Skullmar turned back on Milnick. I don't think you realize what dangerous creatures you are playing with here. The undead are some of the most fearsome beings in Morgoth's armies. Do you know what the great advantage is that the undead have over other warriors? The dwarf's eyes rolled. Um, the skeletons are really good at cutting the grass? Ah! Skullmar shook the dwarf until his three teeth rattled. These are my creations, and no one makes jokes about them. He threw the trembling Milnick to the floor and strode off through a huge cavern, where stacks of long, thin crates were arranged around the walls. The dwarf hurried to catch up. The thing about the undead, Milnick, is that they cannot be killed. You may put them out of action for a while, but they'll always be back. Now, take zombies, for instance. The captain of the dead host stopped and pried the lid of a crate to reveal a decaying corpse. The dwarf's nose wrinkled as a few flies buzzed out. They are not particularly frost, but their legions are endless, and even the fittest enemy will eventually tire of running from them. The zombie opened its eyes and glared at the dwarf, who backed away a little. And skeletons! Skullmar opened another coffin. Bone gleamed dully within, but Milnick stood a little further back this time. Their lack of flesh makes them particularly nimble. But these mummies... He opened a third coffin, and the odour of sand and dust and decay wafted forth. The dwarf could see a body wrapped in dirty bandages, which were stained with the blood of a thousand combats. These are particularly nasty. He looked at the mummy. Pull this dwarf's head off. The creature lurched from its coffin and had the dwarf in a death grip before he had time to dodge. He began to scream. Stop! Skullmar said. He smiled at Milnick, who was gibbering on the floor. And, as you can see, very obedient. Now, what else have we got? Milnick picked himself up from the floor, his face white with fear. If he'd just come this way, less part of destruction. As they reached the end of the cavern, they came across a group of strange, rat-like beings about five feet tall. They were placing a coffin on top of a pile of other coffins. Milnick and his overlord were quiet for a moment until the coffin was safely stacked, and then Milnick stepped forward. Emperor of Evil, he began, may I present to you some Skaven, loyal vassals of the throne. The Skaven bowed, looking sidelong out of their small piercing eyes. Although they were wearing heavy armour, they had no trouble bending. Arise, said Skulmar graciously. They straightened up. Skavens fight with slings and spears. They may look like overgrown rats, but they're very intelligent and extremely sneaky. The Skaven bowed again. Skulmar waved a hand in dismissal, and they scurried off about their business. A little ugly, perhaps, said Skulmar, but wonderfully evil. Related to those rat ogres, I deem. Oh yes, Lord of Destruction. You're very perceptive. You try my patience, growled Skoma. We've had destruction once today already. One more slip like that and I'll feed you to the orcs. Milnick said nothing, but led the way onwards. From ahead, 
they heard the clash of weapon on weapon. Don't worry, Tetrarch of Terror. It's just the Chaos Warriors training. As they came round the corner, they saw two heavily armoured fighters swinging axes at each other. An unpleasant smell wafted across the practice floor. The Chaos Warriors fought fiercely, their axes striking sparks from each other's armour. Well, said Skulma, they seem fierce, but are they evil? Oh, very evil, malevolent Mahara. Very evil, indeed, Milnik said proudly. They have sold their souls to Chaos, and in return have been given magical armor, which is bonded to their skin. They carry swords carved with the most malevolent rules imaginable, and they know if they do not perform some act of evil every day, Chaos will warp them into shapes of ultimate horror. And what sort of evil deeds do they perform? Burning entire villages after torturing all the inhabitants, polluting rivers with chaos plague, things like that. Hmm, said Skulma, nodding approvingly. Good. As they carried on down the corridor, they suddenly came across a huge statue, twice the height of Skulma. The captain of the dead host looked up at it. What a splendid piece of sculpture. I don't remember seeing that before. That's not a statue, Wing Commander. It's a gargoyle. Watch this. He moved towards the statue and was about to touch it, then stopped and turned back to Skulmar. I'd stand back a bit, if I were you. As Skulmar retreated slightly, the Chaos Dwarf reached out and lightly touched the gargoyle. It immediately came to life, cracking its whip, waving its sword and beating its huge wings. It aimed a blow at Milnik, who barely dodged in time. Down, boy, down, he shouted. The gargoyle calmed a little and stood still, growling in the back of its throat. Slowly, it turned back to stone. Well, said Skulmar, I'm glad it's on my side. Skulmar chuckled to himself as they strode along another endless dusty passage. Milnik looked up apprehensively. What is it? What is it? Potent of peril, he asked. I'm just thinking it will be quite easy to conquer the world with all this help, said Skulma. Ah, said Milnik. Then just wait until you see what I've got for you around this corner.